Yo, what's up everybody, how's it going? Today we are playing Dota 1x6, which is of course made by Xeno. And as you can see, there's a new hero, there is Razor. So that's exactly what we're gonna do today. We're gonna play some Razor, and I hope you guys enjoy it. Let's get right into it. Okay, we got ourselves Razor. Pop this bad boy, get ourselves some boots, and start running. Uh, we'll pick up this. So Sven over there, you can do that. This has been taken. Hello, buddy. All right. I think that's probably all we're doing here. So let's just go back. Razor, very strong hero. I have to say, um, I've been playing primarily the W path so far, and it is amazing. It is so good. Uh, I've also tried out the ultimate path, which is fine. But honestly, the W path is so freaking good that it kind of like <laughs> doesn't really matter how good the ultimate path is. If you want to play Razor, you can play Razor. It's so giga viable, like it's fine. Um, but yeah, so Razor, cool hero. I mean, obviously, I like Razor in general. I think he's a fun hero, just a normal Dota. Um, so I'm I'm glad to see him here. Uh, we'll get a stack and then take you guys down. Thank you very much. We've got uh, Plasma Field. This is actually a really, really, really sick ability for early farming. It just does a lot of damage to the creeps, which is nice. Obviously, that's something that we like. Um, but it's also really nice. Uh, oh, these suck. I guess Duelist close. It's really nice if we manage to get ourselves some extra mana, because then we can just like spam it nonstop and become incredibly fast at clearing creep camps like it's actually just god tier one of the fastest farmers in the game if you manage to get some extra mana so uh a lot of that a lot of a lot of a lot of the early game is gonna ride on that <laughs> unfortunately a lot of the early game is gonna ride on us getting lucky and uh getting a little bit of extra mana and uh, we'll get some wraith bands We'll get Orb of Corrosion because uh, we need to keep the static link on people and Orb of Corrosion is very good for that. Hello, fuck off, thank you. Wait, you wanna- what? Oh yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> that was a little- I was a little confused there for a moment. Because like obviously we are Razor, right? You don't- you don't really want to just like fight me like that. Unless you're a hero that can't fight me like that and sorry. But Sniper is not it. Sniper will not be able to win that kind of encounter. <laughs> so, you know. I will take down this and then teleport back. Wait, that's wrong. Uh, let's start out with the uh, Wraith Band. And, uh, yeah, oh, we are playing on Dubai today. No, not US East, because uh, even yesterday in chat figured out that Dubai is uh, closer. It's closer nearby. So... Just giving that a go today. <laughs> EU is still dead. No service available for us on EU. Uh, so we're not gonna get ourselves any any uh, any service just for us. We have to kind of import some service, I guess. Or maybe, I guess we emigrate to some service. Right? That's what we're doing. Oh well. A static link steals up to 10% spell damage from the target. That's pretty nice. And uh, I will get myself a double Wraith Band. Thank you. I'm just using my ultimate right now because, you know, why not? <laughs> oh, we need mana, though. I think we'll be okay, right? We've got, we've got some mana region. Oh, we're not okay. No, our mana region is not high enough. Nope, lesson learned, I guess. Razor is not smart. Hey, this is what I said earlier. It's just like, we care about having uh, mana region, and so far we've not been really getting it. Um, since we're missing out on a lot of this creep wave anyway, it's fine. We'll just pick this up first. And then we will use our nuke. Thank you. And pick up this. And here. And we get agility. Well, no mana for us. Uh, so, uh, Wraith Bands. We can activate Wraith Bands to gain some extra attack speed. Uh, currently, it's 40 attack speed because we have two Wraith Bands. Uh, that's fine. We don't really need more than that. Right? I don't want to spend too much money on Wraith Bands because I want to spend a lot of money on a Solar Crest. 
Uh, because Solar Crest is really good for us. It's super sick. So we want to get a Solar Crest. And um, yeah. Uh, static Link cannot be blocked. We already had this, right? Um, if the Static Link goes unbroken, it's okay. Do you want to? Seriously? Yeah, this is not... Do we have to? I guess. Sure. I mean... I I didn't really mean to go in. <laughs> I was happy to disengage. I am not just a violent brute looking, hunting for blood nonstop. Uh, but if you make me, then I will. Right? If you leave me no choice, then uh, that's just where we go. So... Here we have it. Um, after Static Link ends, the ability can be cast again. Links to, uh, to the target for 5 seconds. The Link dispels, buffs from the target, deals magic damage equal to 200% of your attack damage every second. And this Link deprives you, of, uh, this deprives you of up to 100% of your attack damage for a couple of seconds. So it's a little bit confusing. Honestly, I think it'll be even a little bit confusing after I explain, unfortunately. Um, but the way this works is basically we can recast it to then shoot this laser beam. And this laser beam... I'm too low, I can't challenge this like this. I will just die. Uh, there's respawns, they're too quick. This laser beam drains our attack damage. It reduces how much attack damage we do. And then deals damage to our opponents based on our attack damage. So what we want to do is we want to cast Static Link on opponents, drain all of their damage, and then after that's done, shoot the beam at them. But we can interrupt our Static Link with the beam anytime we want. So we can just cast it early if we want. It does also deal AoE damage, which is useful for creeps. So what we can do here is shoot this beam here like this, does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. It's a little confusing. I'm, I'm, I've got to be completely honest. It's a little confusing of an upgrade, but it is very powerful. It is very, very powerful. So, yeah, we'll grab this. Hey, Urchulak, thanks for the uh, Twitch Prime. I appreciate it, my friend. Anyway, what you need to know is we're casting W on people. Thanks for the mana. We're casting W on people, and then uh, we're casting W on people again. And now we're going to get ourselves a Celestial Spear, uh, because it's a great item. It stops people from running away, has a really, 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 really long cast range, reduces armor. It's just super good. Uh, after Celestial Spear, we'll probably get um, a Silver Edge, because then the Bristleback will just be free food. Uh, we got pretty lucky in managing to kill the Bristleback twice already, so yeah. Anyway, uh, we got a thing. At the beginning, on the end of Static Link, you pull the enemy towards you. And uh, if Static Link ends without breaking, you fear the enemy. Very good upgrade. Very good upgrade. It's fantastic. We can pull people in. And if we recast Static Link, we can actually pull people in twice. Um, okay, there's Bristleback. Ooh, very low HP though. Yeah, I think I'll prioritize this guy because it's just kind of like free. I could go for the Wraith King, but he isn't as free. Beam? Nice. Oh, Beam continues even if we are stunned. Oh, that guy already used his ultimate. Sick. All right, fantastic. <laughs> I mean, I don't think I could ask for a better opportunity than that. So that worked out great. But yeah, the Beam continues even if we're stunned. So after we cast the Beam, it'll just kind of keep shooting. Which is crazy. Uh, extra cast range on the link, and it slows, which is nice. Uh, we, can we still go for the bristle? I mean, I guess. I doubt that he'll let us. No, we've, we've kind of been going in a lot already. But hey. We'll get extra armor. Thank you very much. I gotta remember to use my Wraith Band. That's always something I forget about. I buy them for the stats because the stats are really good and really handy and just fantastic all around and then I forget to cast them. Oh, uh, something I wanted to say. TI. Uh, so, God, I spent eight hours watching TI today. It was painful. Um, TI sucks this year. Is that okay to say? 
Is that an uncontroversial opinion or is that a controversial opinion? How do you guys feel about TI this year? It's bad, right? Like, it, it feels just, just not... I don't know. Metagame is super farming heavy, super slow. And it's just the... I don't know. Oh, hello, hello. Uh, I guess we drain from you. I got to drain from somebody. All right, we got this guy, and then we shoot you. Oh. <laughs> All right. It's hard to deal damage while I have all of these. Like, what was that? Minus 20% on this guy? Are you a cool gamer like me? Then you know what cool gamers do? They leave likes on videos that they watch of Dota creators that they like. Thank you. It's, I mean, honestly, the, the games this morning, they were so boring. I'm sorry. I, I know I'm not supposed to say this, um, but they were so boring because the teams were just literally farming until they had a 50,000 net worth lead. There were multiple games where teams had 50,000 net worth leads and didn't push. I was just like, there's something going wrong, right? Like, that just shouldn't happen. All right, uh, let's get this here. So, Static Link ends without breaking. Static Link drain damage permanently increases by 6. This effect stacks 12 times, after which Static Link duration reduces by 2 seconds with the same effectiveness. Uh, very good upgrade. Fantastic. Um, problem is, we need to farm this up by keeping Static Link on people for a very long time. However, it's a bit easier than it seems, uh, because if we get a kill on a target while it has Static Link active, that counts. That's fine. That's allowed. <laughs> So that that isn't too bad there. Uh, we will try to hunt the sniper. Sniper is what build ultimate? Yeah, that's that's very killable. Uh, Ogre maybe 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 no. Uh, let's get sniper. Let's just go for the sniper. But yeah, uh, so you know, it's just been it's been a pain. It's been a pain. And uh, hello. No, we got the kill, but unfortunately I had to interrupt my static link, so I didn't get the charge. Oh, well. But uh, I don't want to have to do another three full days of watching TI if this is what it's going to be like. And I also think for the finals we can have some fun. Um, so what I've decided to do is for the finals, I'm going to be like, we're going to be watching them together live on stream. So if you want to join for that, feel free to join for that. Because so far we've been like re-watching stuff afterwards. Just sort of because things t like the TI happens at such a late time for me um, but for those I want to watch it live for the finals um, so yeah. <clears throat> okay and this bristle back down there uh, we need to get this bad boy right here and I also want this bad boy okay should be killable Oh, it's not. It's not killable. Fuck. It's E, right? Yeah, shit. So this is why we need Silver Edge. Um, if we want to kill the Bristleback from now on, we need Silver Edge. In case you're wondering why the Bristleback was shooting so many Quill Sprays, even though I was in front of him, the E has an active effect that makes it so that even if he's being attacked from the front, he still shoots Quill Sprays. It basically makes him Bristle Sphere, right? Like everything counts as the back. Um, this is bad for us <laughs> this is a problem and uh, we're not really gonna be able to kill him anymore I'm all, i was honestly surprised we managed to get a couple kills in the early game that's pretty nice all right let's go for the sven maybe all right if we can just like use up this that's good and then shoot him with magic damage nice Totally fine. Pretty happy just to get that kill. Might need a BKB. What's this? Tier 2? Orb of Corrosion, maybe? Nah. Nah, I guess, yeah. It's it's not bad. It's, it's actually pretty good. I don't have any smokes anymore. Uh, Sven, where could he have gone? Oh, he's coming back. Okay, that's good should be able to just like throw this from a really long distance away and then pull him in 
And I think we just win in a straight up fight because he can't really get close. And here it is, and then we charge this, or like use this, and it just burns him out. Sick. Um, and then we max this out. It's also great because we're actually managing to stack up a couple of our um, static link charges, right? As I said already, these are very powerful, actually. It increases our damage output by a lot. You can see up by 40 extra damage now. That's huge. Um, but it does also just kind of like, it's hard. It's just hard to do. <laughs> it's, just, it's just kind of difficult. <laughs> All right, let's go back. <clears throat> I think you're giving the teams way too much credit for why Dota is the way it is right now. I think there's a very simple explanation why Dota is the way it is right now. Because TI-10... Ooh, what do we get here? Can we cast again to stop the wave? Uh, empower. Oh, I want this. Movement speed and evasion for agility. Oh, yeah. We'll get that. And we don't really have any other upgrades that we're really looking for. To be honest, like, the ones... We have our W and that's what we need. Um... But Dota was a farming-based slow game that was slowing down in general at TI-10. And then at TI-11, it slowed down even more. And it became even more farming-based. And then they added a million creeps around the map. And made the map bigger. I just... I don't think... I don't think it requires a lot of guesswork to figure out why the game became slower, if I'm honest. Right? The mechanics added to the game matter. The changes made are relevant. Alright. Alright, there it is. I gotta disengage this. Ah, it's just not enough, is it? Fuck. Ah, it's so hard. <clears throat> but yeah, you know, like I have how many TI, TI games did I watch at this stage of this TI? Uh, like 50 or so. I've watched like 50 games of this TI probably. Uh, it's not a bad guess. I have my spreadsheet here. And there's really just two styles of games which are really fast stomps that are centered around Tormentor. Or um, really, really, really slow grinding games that take forever. And that's pretty much it. That's the entire tournament. And it's a pain. I don't know why they added so many creep cams. I mean, the only one who thinks is just like really weird. Like what else is there to do? If you're going to add a million creep cams. All right, um, Bristleback, I think, is still just a nightmare. We do also probably need some healing to deal with him. I mean, our side of the map is just generally terrible for us. As you wish. Our side of the map is just really bad. Because, like, those two heroes are tough. Structures fortified. Oh, there's a Sven down there and a Wraith King. Do we just go for this? I guess. I mean, we'll just kind of take these creeps if nobody else is here. I don't know where everybody is, but if they're not here, then why wouldn't we take the freebie, right? All right, Silver Edge is done. Now I need some life steal if I want to fight against the Bristleback. I know I'm itemizing a lot for the Bristleback, but I, I need to. I need to plan for the late game here. Bristleback is number one in net worth. I mean, I've died to him twice now, which is really irritating. Is it twice? Has it been three times? Uh, I have a way too often. I've died to him too often. Alright, pick this up. Pick up a bounty rune. And then extra cast range and a slow. That's very good. Oh, nope, nope, nope. Very good. And then we just burst these guys down. 
no problem. Get some spell life steal. Why not? Sell you, get some life steal here. What is your ideal pro daughter game length and style then? Um, you're acting as if it's only possible for there to be one. Go watch TI7. TI7 is great. Best Dota tournament of all time. TA7, you have so many different styles and approaches to the game. What I want is variety. I don't mind long games, if not every game is long. I don't mind storms, if not every game is a storm. What I am looking for is a range of possible strategies. Dota went from a game with one possible strategy to a game with lots and lots of different possible approaches to playing the game, and then back to a game where there's just one singular strategy. And that's where we're at right now. And I think that's a regression. I think that is worse than what we had for quite a while. I think that's a shame. But it's unfortunate because like the way we think about the game, the way I see a lot of the community think about the game, is that they just like don't even get what I mean when I say that. I'm not trying to say that I'm some gigabrain genius here. Uh, but instead it's just gotten so ingrained oh hello yeah see so much it's gotten so ingrained this idea that there is this is how you play dota right like something as fundamental as lanes there used to be variety in lanes Right? TI7, TI8, TI9, you saw tri lanes, you saw 2 2 1 mids, you saw junglers, you saw the classic 2 1 2. What is it today? It's all the same. <laughs> over and over and over again, endlessly. Alright, nice. And I'm not saying that any one of these is the best. I'm saying that Dota was the best when you could see any of them in a match. Very well. That's when Dota was the most fun to watch. And let me also be clear about one other thing. All of my criticism for Dota is always centered around the viewing experience of competitive Dota. I actually think from a playing perspective, from a regular old player perspective, Dota right now is really good, really fun. Ah, that's a shame. I wanted that kill. If I get that kill, I can actually push much better. But we will still go for it. Oh, wait. It counts me as having been part of the kill. That's very nice. Very convenient. <laughs> I mean, when was the last time you saw something other than a 2-1-2 line? All right, just get a couple of hits in and then we do this and we burn, burn, burn. Oh, we're dead. No, we're not. Nice. But I can't push. I'm too low. All right, well, we are at uh, seven static link stacks. I might be able to just heal up on this creep and then go push. It'll be a bit tight, but you know, we are only one building away from actually fully exposing the space. Okay, that's fine. We'll get this. Nice. And I think that's kind of a shame. Like, when we have discussions about the meta game of Dota, the only thing people seem to talk about is heroes. Not about, the, like, the general structure of the game. Like, this general structure of the game could be so different. It could be so different. Why is it that every team has three cores? Now, you might say, well, that's just how Dota is played. But, like, no, it isn't. There were so many years and so many tournaments where that wasn't how Dota was played. It's just how Dota is played now. And I'm not saying that necessarily having a different amount of cores would be better or worse. I just want the variety. That's all I'm, that's all I'm looking for. I'm a 
I'm a variety fiend. You know what I mean. So, uh, MKB, right? He stays position 4, almost seems like a core. It literally is. It's becoming a core. Um, at TI-12, you are seeing, because the games are going so long, that teams are picking really greedy position 4, uh, position 4 heroes and then buy Hand of Midas on them. Really, really early on. Like, they rush Hand of Midas. Because they know that the games are gonna go for such a long time that eventually they'll be able to just actually take on somewhat of a core role. We saw that with Ancient Apparition and Earth Spirit earlier. Um, like, that's totally a thing. Alright, I'm just kind of trying to knock out the Bristleback as early as I can. Alright, that should be a kill. Because, like, the Bristleback is just kind of a problem and forces me to itemize in a specific way. If I can kill the Bristleback, I can get rid of the Silver Edge and buy different items. Or I can keep it, but either way, I don't have to itemize for the Bristleback anymore, and that's good. <clears throat> good. Alright, so. Uh, I have the Storm Kimmy cast with stun, then the ability applies a strong dispel and reduces incoming damage for 3 seconds. And with each Eye of the Storm Lightning Strike, uh, your attack speed increases by 2, or for each 700 distance tra traveled, my item cooldown reduces. Hmm. I think I'll get this. You also get some extra attacks with the Lightning Strike. What happens in your ideal post TI 2 12 patch? Well, I am not a designer working on the game. I can't tell you a complete rework. Like, I can't I can't do that. I don't know like what they are planning. I don't know what they have. I haven't spent the necessary time to properly assess things. But there are a couple of changes that I think would be good for the game. The first one is a bit of a controversial one that I've been arguing for for a long time. Um, but there's two changes that I would make. If you gave me control over Dota right now, and you said, Balmy, okay, you get to implement two things. Here's my two things I would implement. I would first make it so that buyback is limited to once per game and it's free. So buyback still exists, but you may only buy back once per game and that buyback is free. It doesn't cost money. That would make a late game a lot more palatable, I think. And would make it so that it doesn't take us long to get there. Um, because players would just like be forced to actually end the game. Alright, come here. Boom, boom, boom. Beat him up. Alright. And then we drain. And ah, maybe should have waited with that. I don't know. We're pretty strong right now. We can just fight. Ooh, maybe not. Alright, I need another... Oh, that was so close, but we got him, right? Oh my god, that was so close. So that would be the first thing I would do. I would reduce the number of buybacks available to each player. Because I think very frequently in the late game, the, ter the, the players are incentivized to just stall for buyback cooldown to be ready. Right? So players will die, be forced to buy back, and then they'll be like, okay, well, we're not going to take any risks for seven minutes. And I think buyback can be a really fun, exciting mechanic. I wouldn't want to take that away from the game. But I do think that that seven min minute uh, like attitude, that's a problem. Right? I also think buyback is silly because it makes it so that you don't have to spend money. Um, or like that you are incentivized to not spend money. Right, it makes it so that players think to themselves, hmm, well, I could either buy items right now or save for buyback. And then when they are saving for buyback, which is nearly always the correct choice, that does also then mean they are not actually uh, progressing their item builds anymore, which I think is silly. Like, isn't getting items kind of the point? I don't know. All right. Ooh, that was kind of close. And it just stores the game. So that's it. Buy back every 30 minutes. I would be okay with that as an alternative solution. I think it is a worse solution. But as a compromise solution, I would be okay with saying buyback is limit. Buyback cooldown is significantly increased. And when I say significantly, I do mean significantly. 
Oh, that got interrupted. That's not so good. So that would be the one change. The other change I would make is I would make Mega Creeps way stronger. Because I think right now people don't go for... Um, don't go for bases. Like, how often have you heard the caster say, never go high ground? Never go high ground. Don't you think that's a problem? That that is absolutely the correct attitude to have to say, never go high ground? Shouldn't going high ground be the fucking game? Why is never go high ground just a mantra that we all accept as just, like, yeah, that's just how you play the game? I think that's silly. I think players should be incentivized to go high ground. But why don't they go high ground? Because high ground, the reward, there are two rewards. Well, three possible rewards. But we'll exclude one because that one is self-explanatory and that one is worth it, which is you win the game. Right? But let's leave that one out for now. But there are two other rewards for going high ground, which are killing a barracks. Well, which is usually killing a barracks, which means you kill a barracks and then you get gold for that and you get super creeps. The problem is that the gold isn't that high. It is high, but not that high. But sometimes people will go for high ground anyway just because they want the money. But the thing is, I can get gold elsewhere. I can kill Tormentors, I can kill, uh, I can uh, just kill Creeps, I can kill Roshan, I, I can just get gold elsewhere. Like, getting gold is not something that I need to go high ground for. I can just go do one of the million other things to do on the map. Super Creeps, on the other hand, I can only get here. I can only get them on the high ground. I can't get them anywhere else, right? The problem is, they suck. They are so weak. They haven't been updated forever. They are terrible, right? They are so fucking weak. If a creep team gets, like what we've seen a lot at uh, TI-12, like a ton, a ton of this, is we have seen teams um, just surrender barracks. If the enemy team is stronger than you and they push your high ground, you just let them have it. Teams won't even fight for the barracks. They will only fight for the last barracks. But other than that, they don't care. Because ultimately, the money you would lose from a lost fight is worse than having to deal with super creeps. Because super creeps are just not worth anything. They just suck. They are just worthless. Do you guys know how often mega creeps, in the history of Dota, how often they have been buffed? Once. One single time. And that is questionable because it's really just the addition of the flag bearer. They have just not been buffed. They just don't buff, they've never buffed mega creeps, really. But the heroes are getting power crept like crazy. Heroes are so strong now. So what I would do is I would make super creeps as strong as mega creeps are right now. And I would make mega creeps way the fuck stronger. Mega creeps would be a problem. Like if you have to go up, if, you, if your opponents get mega creeps, you would be like, oh shit friends, we are in trouble. Not because they have more money, but because they have mega creeps. All right, I got him. There we go. Beam, beam, beam. Beam, beam, beam. Just beam him down. All right, we sell all boots. Would that not reduce the chances of comeback? I'm fine with that. I think that Dota, it's too hard to win Dota right now. I think Dota players are terrified of the idea of somebody actually winning a Dota, and I find that to be very silly. I think it is very, very difficult to win a Dota right now. And by that I mean if you don't have an overwhelming advantage, you can't push. And I think that's a problem. I think you should be able to win even if you don't have an overwhelming advantage by either having a more unique or interesting draft, or by just winning a good team fight and playing well and building a permanent advantage in some way that isn't just money. 
But that's something that isn't currently possible. It used to be. This used to be possible, by the way. I'm not just, like, making shit up out of my ass. Right? It used to be the case that if you were winning, what you could do is you go for a barracks. And even if you lose the fight over the barracks in the way that your heroes die, that would still be fine because just the creeps alone are worth it. The creeps by themselves are worth taking the risk for. And that is just not the case anymore. All right. So to me, those are the two changes that I would make to Dota. I would make, I would make um, buyback more rare so that teams can actually end the game without needing to stall forever. And I would make mega creeps and super creeps a worthwhile objective so that there is a point to doing something on the map that isn't just farming. All right, we got him. Nice. Giving Mega Creeps some spells is a good idea. I wouldn't give them spells necessarily. Somebody suggested like 2% of max HP per attack as damage. Something like that. And then maybe make all of them ranged. So that you just like, if you get near them, you just get fucked up. Mega Creeps should be dangerous, but they are not. All right. Have you, like, I think these days when you win, when you take a barracks or when you lose a barracks, I suppose, you, you say, fuck, we are losing, not because your opponents got creeps. You say, fuck, we are losing because your opponents just are far ahead and they managed to somehow go high ground. <laughs> right? Like, like, that's the problem. Uh, I'm thinking we get rid of the Silver Edge, right? Do we like the Silver Edge? I don't think the Silver Edge is really that good anymore. I would rather have just uh, big fat crits, like really big crits. My current flow. Razor build is crazy, isn't it? Me where you will. All right, more agility is good. No, no, no. But again, something that I think is really, really important to keep in mind when talking about these kinds of things, and something that I think a lot of people are forgetting, is that Dota gotta end sometimes. I'm sorry, a Dota where every game is a 70-minute farm fest is not a good Dota. That's where we're at right now. It gotta end sometime. Not everything needs comeback mechanisms. Not everything needs to be endlessly stallable. It is fine for a team to just lose. That is fine. This is the TI with the longest average game time. It is. It is just generally the worst balanced TI. Like, for example, uh, the Radiant win rate is higher than 60%. 60%. That is absurd. That should not be happening. All right, um, I am in trouble. Yeah, we're dead. Rest in peace. Why is it so high? Because the map is shit. The map is poorly balanced. Every single lane has an advantage for the Radiant in some sort of side, in some sort of way. Like, the map is built in such a way that it is just easier to play on the Radiant. There is, this is not a coincidence. We have had so many games now that it's just a statistical like fact that like the Radiant just has a 60%, above 60% win rate. And it's going up. As the teams are getting better, the Radiant win rate is increasing. It was only 59% yesterday. Like this isn't just like, oh, I guess poor, like, like the players out of the, like, um, the early round, the group stage, well, they weren't as good, so, like, you know, coincidences happen. No, as the players are getting better, the win rate of Radiant is going up. Alright, um... 
Beam, 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 beam. Okay, so we are in trouble. I need to just survive until I have my beam again. There it is. Okay, we're good. We are good. Nice. Which areas are poorly balanced? Um, the Radiant, like, compare the distance between the Radiant twin gate, uh, twin gate and the Dire Twin Gate. It makes the Radiant have a much easier time controlling space because they can move between stuff. Or take a look, have a look at how easy it is to go from the Radiant Tier 1 Tower to, uh, like, in the bot lane to uh, its creep camps compared to the other side of the map for the Dire. Way, way, way easier for the Radiant. Mid lane jungle is way easier for Radiant as well. Pretty much every part of the map has some advantage for Radiant, one way or the other. Alright, I'm... I really, really, really want to knock out the Wraith King, but I don't think I can. So I'm gonna have to go for this guy. Problem is that you're only exposed to pro games. Oh, I, again, I have been very explicit about this, right? And I want to be clear here. I am only talking about pro Dota. I think from a casual player perspective, Dota is actually in a really good spot. But I am explicitly, exclusively talking about pro Dota. Yeah, which... Oh, man. Uh, I thought BKB is just not happening. Uh, this is where we're struggling. We're going up against some pretty tough heroes, honestly. The Ogre Magi is killable, but the Wraith King is just like a really hard matchup because he, we need to kill him twice. And we're not good at that. We're, we're good at a lot of things, but we're not really that good at killing him twice. I mean, maybe we get Octarine Core? I could replace this with an Octarine Core? What do you guys think about that? Alright, let's get a Moonshot first. If I replace this with Octarine Core, I can cast my Static Link slightly more often. That could be good. Uh, Apex? Gotta be Apex, right? Gotta be Apex. Apex. Alright, let's come in here. So... Nuke these guys down. He's all beam. Yes! <laughs> I love the beam. It's very fun, isn't it? <laughs> Although right now I deal no damage. <laughs> Alright. Oh. Well, that changes things, doesn't it? Wow, I didn't expect that. Um... Is that bad? That's bad, right? That's bad? What do we do? Ooh. Ogre was quite killable before, but now he's gonna have to dual boost. Hmm. Kind of wish I had taken the mirror shield. I really... I don't know. I guess I probably should have taken the mirror shield even against the Wraith King, right? Okay, that was probably just a mistake, not taking the mirror shield. This is worth 2,500. Is there anything we can buy that feels good? I mean, I guess Lincoln's. We don't care about our epic, right? I'm going to get some cooldown reduction for what it's worth. Is Lincoln's better? I don't care about Celestial Spear, right? That can go. I think it's Lincoln's. I don't know. Could be a Mage Slayer instead. It could be like a Spellbreaker. We'll just go with Lincoln's. We'll see. If we lose, then we lose. Mm -hmm. Alright, hello. Here's this damage. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. 
I mean, if we manage to cast it, it's it's a pretty guaranteed kill, right? <laughs> Just burns them out. All right, here it is. And that's a kill. Nice! Even even one against that, that weird dual buff thing. Get fucked, Straka. We got him. Nice. Oh, yeah, I mean, it is some bullshit, honestly. I don't know what he could have done. Because <laughs> the laser. It's just the laser at the end that kills him, right? But, like, even if you stun me, the laser is still coming out. Anyway, hello. I guess I'm blurry today. No, I guess we're just gonna do a blurry outro. Thank you very much for watching the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Goodbye.